We are back with another segment of Midweek Music Maelstrom, and I could not be more excited. We are diving into some things with Sick Talk, and we were referred this band by Drake Rogers of The Horribles, who you may have seen on the very first Midweek Maelstrom episode. You know what? I think I went with too much alliteration when I named my show, but it's too late to go back now because I mess it up like almost every time, and I'm the one who freaking named it. So here we are again. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name's Alex. I'm the singer and guitar player of the band Sick Talk. Um, we're kind of like your regular alternative garage kind of band. You know, we're really into bands like Pup and Fiddler and Beach Goons. And what I'm trying to say is we use a lot of echo and reverb and stuff like that. And but it's nice to be here. Thank you for having me. No, it's it's my pleasure. I always get so excited to help people discover new music and, you know, get some new bands out there. That's what we do here. So how long have you guys been a band, been performing? So this band we started, like, I want to say it's been like two years. We started like right when the pandemic was starting up, where it was kind of like, I used to be in a band called The Damsels. And I was kind of out of that for a little while. And it's actually the same drummer as it was in the damsels and we have a new bass player's name's ryan so we were all kind of just i was kind of just coming back from leaving that band and trying to figure out what to do because i had all these songs and so i just started calling people i know and next thing you know we were, we made the first record grab it and go and we were called a, we were called sin city saints then which is a dumb name for a band that's not from las vegas and here we are I love it. So are you guys on Spotify, Apple? Where can people find your music? So I I know we're having some problems with some of the streaming stuff like Apple and stuff, but you can definitely find us on Spotify under Sick Talk. We have one record out now called Grab It and Go. And we're about to start working on another one, which is going to be a whole different sound, whole different ball game. Oh, wow. So what were you doing musically before the whole COVID thing? Because you said Sick, Sick Talk started right around COVID. Mm -hmm. So before that, I was in the Damsels with our drummer, Devin. And that was very, like, just kind of straight up skate punk a little. Very, like, no effects and pretty much tailored to anybody that wears khaki shorts and uses too much hair gel. I was really into that. You know, I was really into, like, Fat Mike and Rancid and stuff like that, so... So were those some of your biggest influences? Where did a lot of the sound inspiration come from for Sick Talk? So that was then. Stuff kind of changed between then and now. I kind of broadened my horizons a little bit with music stuff. So I started listening to a lot of like surf, a lot of hardcore lately. You know, I've been listening to bands like Comeback Kid and Terror and stuff like that. And then, you know, turning around and listening to super nice, relaxing surf music and stuff like that so you sprinkle in a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit it of becomes depression. like a music stew kind of yeah you know and i kind of have this bad habit of like going getting really into like a certain sound for a little while and then going i could probably do that and then i just try to write my version of it and so you know given the amount of time every couple months i just kind of sound a little different i think and so do you go for that variety? Is that like an intentional change in the sound? I'm actually trying to stop doing that. So <laughs> it's like I, I wanna... trying to break like a bad habit? Sort of, because I feel like it's probably going to be a lot easier for me if I can kind of stick to one direction. Do you, you know what I mean? consistency I... is going to be better for the fans? Like, do you think that's going to, people are going to want more of that consistency? Or do you think they're going to think... like the variety? I think that, Variety is good, but, you know, you can't be all over the place all the time. You know what I mean? I'd like to be able to say, hey, my band definitely like sounds like this. You know what I mean? And then kind of tweak it from there. But I want to figure out kind of where that home base is and then kind of work my way out of it from there. Right. You know, and then tr try new stuff. That's how you get new sounds. And just kind of see. So what have it you does. guys put on any shows since COVID? We've been. We've been playing around, especially lately. You know, we just did the Punks for Paws thing at St. Pete. It was like a big benefit show. It had all these, I had like 20, 25 bands on it. And all the all the proceeds went to the Punks for Paws, or I'm sorry, the Friends of Strays organization, which is 
St. Pete's oldest no kill shelter. Oh, wow. So I think they raised a couple thousand dollars. I don't really remember exactly what the number was, but it was a fun show. We're playing a show um, at the end of November in Lakeland um, on the 28th at this Indie Fest. It's called Lakeland Indie Fest, and it's at this place called Yard on Mass. So, yeah, we've been playing around. I think we're going to take December to work on the new record. So we're probably not going to play that much until like January or February. Yeah, but a new record is still really exciting. Yeah, we've got to stay it's busy, be you know. An EP, a full length. Uh, I think it's going to be more like an EP, but we have a couple of stuff that we're going to kind of sit on and then cipher out as we go. So it's oh. not all coming out at once, but we will have at least a full EP coming out soon. So what have been your coolest and or weirdest experiences at shows? that you've played oh man see oh, i've been God. around a few times <laughs> uh i've seen a lot of stuff uh, let's see the weirdest the first that comes to mind is when we got booked to play this show called neptune's lounge yeah i'm gonna name drop them because they were being jerks and we we show up and we had this band come all the way from orlando and um, the owner just decided that we didn't invite enough people and he canceled it after the first band. So me and some of the other guys from the band just all lined up out front and just started peeing all over the front door because he, he locked us out. And so while we're doing that, the door guy that was like sitting out there earlier comes walking around and he catches us and he just goes, ha ha, yeah, nice. And then he just kind of walked away. It was like, so I think not really the weirdest experience at a show. It's like that cool, memorable experience at a show that didn't happen. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. I'm sorry. I guess I answered the wrong question. No, I dig it. I'll take it. That is great. I, just, I <laughs> you know how shows are. There's always something at every show that you're going to see that you're kind of like, wow, is that really going on? I've seen it all. <laughs> Oh my God. So how long have you considered yourself a musician? Like from like your, your early projects through now, how long have you been playing music? I think I started like learning the guitar when I was like 11 or 12. And I jumped into my first band when I was like 15. I think I was in like the eighth grade going into ninth grade. And I met this kid at the guitar store I was taking lessons at and they were a little older than I was. So I started in this band called the Trenchmen, which was like, not that cool. I mean, it was fun. I had hair down to here. I was just a little pimply kid and then I think after that is when I said oh you know what I think punk rock's really cool I had a couple different phases I did like a thrash thing for a while and then I did I had a rockabilly phase <laughs> you know I had the big pompadour I you know what everybody gets one I guess I missed the scene <laughs> stage though and then I started the damsels when I was like 18 and that was probably like my first like real band where I was getting on like bigger shows and just playing all the time. We did like an East coast tour and then now then Sin city saints and now we're in sick talk. So, you know, I've been at it for, fuck, <laughs> I've been at it for like six or seven years now, I think. Wow. All right. So are there, you said you didn't plan on playing any shows until probably next year. Probably. Yeah. All right. Do you guys have any merch? Uh, we have some stickers, you know, we just got these in. Let me see. Um, they got the Sick Talk logo. Oh, and then the QR code. Good. Yep, and it takes you right to our Spotify. So we'll be handing these out or sticking them everywhere, you know, all over Tampa and anywhere, anywhere we go, really. So but, what has your experience been like in being part of like more a local punk scene? You know, just like anything else, there's parts of it that I really like and then parts of it that I really don't you know because like what i think is cool is that it is pretty tight knit you know what i mean everybody knows everybody everybody's cool and and that that's really cool i like that a lot but it gets a little frustrating sometimes when it's like uh you're not in that group you know if you're trying to get into like a new scene or something and they don't know you so they're kind of like standoffish it, it all depends from scene to scene you know what i mean but i think around here everybody's been really nice and welcoming to me so and where is like here tampa like tampa bay area st pete all like the surrounding area i've always had a good time here 
but you know i've i've run into it but you're, you're it close of, enough for me to catch a show yeah you know we're, we're playing in lakeland at the end of the week but uh hopefully back in january we'll be playing somewhere in tampa so awesome so were there any bands that you've played with that you're like this is a great band these are people that i'd love to play with again oh hell yeah so you know drake rogers uh, we love the horrible his interview yeah i did see it <laughs> i that guy cracks me up i love the horribles that guy is real serious though i was and so excited because right? i didn't know how midweek music maelstrom was really going to go it was something new i'd done small business sunday and then his interview hit a thousand views in the first week. That's I was awesome. So stoked. Yep. Those guys are awesome. I've been playing with them since I was in my old band, the damsels. Devin actually, or my drummer, Devin uh actually filled in for him on a tour before. So we're all super tight. So definitely those guys. We're really tight with the drainouts. They're from St. Pete. They do that like surf site kind of thing. Uh one band that I'm really into right now is called Hovercar. They're new. They're from St. Pete. Um, they're like a two piece. They're kind of doing that grunge thing. And it's really cool. They've got some stuff this down. Yeah, absolutely. Hover car. Hover car. It's all one word. Um, Great. who else do I need to look for? The drain outs. Is that one word? I think it's two. That one's two. Um, the liquid pennies. Those guys have always been really cool. Ooh. That's like very much that surf site kind of thing. It's like art rock almost. Okay. They might not like that I said that. I don't I know. I love, but. you know, putting local bands out there, bringing. Yeah, absolutely. So these guys are on my list. I'm going to hit them up, find their social media. Yeah, they're good too. Getting them to talk to us. You will not regret it. Wow. So do you find that when you're part of a music scene, like everyone's just really close knit, you were saying how like everyone knows somebody. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work when you have a bad experience with another band? Um, well, I guess that really depends on who has the bad experience because I've found that like I often like to keep things to myself or to my like closer circle, you know what I mean? Because I'm definitely in that school of thought to where it's like just because you kind of annoyed me or had this bad experience with me, I don't want to take any gigs away from you per se, you know what I mean? I don't necessarily want to be around you or work with you, I just don't want to. You know what I mean? So I can really only speak for myself on that because I try to stay out of it if it does nothing to do with me, you know? So we can find your music on Spotify, on Apple. Do you have any music videos that we might find on YouTube? Not yet. Um, I think there might be like a live set from when we played Pickle Fest earlier this you year. You said or... yet. So does that mean you're planning one possibly? It's... It's definitely on my list of things that I would like to accomplish. I don't have anything in the works at the moment, but it's it's an itch that's going to be scratched here probably in the near future. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I was listening to um, some of your stuff earlier. I always try to listen to the bands I'm going to interview because I think having a genuine opinion um, always helps. You, you don't want to just throw someone on. You don't know what they're about. Yeah. And yeah, I definitely like it. And I can't wait to hear the new stuff. Yeah, you know, when I did grab it and go, I was going for that kind of like almost you ever listen to like the hives or yeah. you ever hear like the Foxboro hot tubs. I was trying to go for that kind of sound. And what kind of changed between then and now, I think, is now I kind of want to do more of that kind of alternative, just kind of less gimmicky, a little more relatable kind of stuff, you know, more along the lines of bands like Pup and stuff like that. You know, so it's going to be, it's the same band. It's just a whole different sound, essentially. All right. Wow. So is there any music that you listen to that is kind of like outside the wheelhouse of what you sound like? Like any oh, genre yeah. that's like a guilty pleasure or something you love that's just not punk at all? Oh, pretty much everything. I, I love stuff like I listen to like Willie Nelson or Katy Perry there's you know I don't stop anywhere I listen to like rap music a lot of the time you got to get a little bit of everything hardcore jazz oh, yeah. sometimes sometimes when my band's uh hurting and hurting in our wallets we'll uh kind of take on a gig as a blues band and then we'll show up to where my day job is and they we just hold up really 
Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> who cares? You've said so far, like, yeah, do you have like a title for your blues band, or is it like a? No, I just show up to the place that I'm like a waiter at a yacht club. I work in the restaurant, and I talk to my boss into letting my band come and play like once every couple months. So do you like cover other blues songs or do you write? Yeah, you know, it's all just cover songs. We just show up and we do like Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix and whatever. And it, it's just, it's pretty easy. It's, it's kind of fun. You know, we show up, we, nobody knows that we're like not that way at all. They all think That's that we're so respectable super young men. <laughs> you know, I would you gotta get it where you can. That. Because, you know, you do that once or twice and then next thing you know, your merch is paid for or whatever. And all you had to do is sell out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you're doing it in a totally different genre, which I think is is a little bit different. Yeah. Well, it's all just to kind of feed the machine more. It all comes back around to the band. Yeah, so you can put that money into making the music that you want to make. Exactly. You know, and then just staying busy in the meantime. Oh my God. Do you have any of the blue stuff that could be heard? Is it anywhere? No. Is it just <laughs> no, it's not. Is it no, just the we... dirty secret that you keep under the bed? Yeah, I mean, you know, I can't. You can't be telling everybody. You know. Well, I got I mean, it. this is gonna go on YouTube. So okay, well then I guess I just told everybody. But if you know, who cares? I'm still gonna do it. I love that attitude. See that right there? That to me is like the most punk attitude. We're still gonna do it because we're doing what we love. Do yeah, I mean, you know, when you're singing, you're playing blues the way I'm sorry. Do you still have a good time? As yeah, a I mean, it's songs that I like. I love stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's super fun to just show up and kind of you don't have to worry about any whether or not they like your song because you're not playing your song. You know, there's no pressure. I just show up and I just start playing songs that I know. <laughs> and, you know, they're all like older drunk people, so they don't care. They're they're having a good time. And then, and then next thing you know, I've got some money to order some cool stickers. So it all comes back around. Oh my God. I love that. Well, we're definitely going to be linking people to your stuff. Um, this has been just so great talking with you. This is one of my, this is probably going to be in my top five interviews. Oh, <laughs> cool. I was, I was hoping so. Oh my God. So we're definitely going to be keeping people posted when new stuff comes out. I'll link people to what you've got out now. Absolutely. Um, just I would give us love like to a, do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you want. But uh, yeah, if, if you just follow us on Spotify, like when we when the new stuff's coming around, it'll be all up there. We're pro you know, that's where you'll find it all. So, but yes, absolutely. I would love to do this again. And you know, uh, if you don't mind subscribing to the Cryptnotic YouTube page, mm -hmm. help people find you. Um, you and everyone... Make sure you tune in for Small Business Sunday and Midweek Music Maelstrom. I said it right that time. Congrats. We are trying to give a platform to small business owners, freelancers, independent contractors, and of course, local bands are the small businesses of the music industry. They deserve a platform just as much. We need to help people find new music and support the smaller bands because you know what? Once they make it big, you will have listened to them first and you heard it right here. So this is Ariel. I just interviewed Sick Talk. So we hope to see you again next time.